Hello students, this is the final video regarding the equivalent weights, especially I am focused on the competitive level, taking some different and some innovative molecules, how to calculate their equivalent weights. Here I am taking the number one oxalic acid, but it which appears to be very easy, but depending on the conditions, its n factor will change, oxalic acid, H2. C2O4 is the formula of the oxalic acid. Here we will discuss in detail this one. If oxalic acid reacts with 1 mole of NaOH, 2 moles of NaOH, and it undergoes redox reaction. Here, 1 mole of NaOH is taken, 2 mole of NaOH is taken in the next case. And some oxidizing agent is taken. Oxidizing agent. In this case, the product is NaHCO4. In this case, the product is Na2C2O4. In this case, product is 2 moles of CO2. What is the n factor here and there? Come to the oxalic acid structure. This is C double bond O. This is the OH. And this is the C double bond O. This is the OH. Pure basicity of the oxalic acid is 2. Two acidic reactions are hydrogens are there. These two products are due to neutralization acid base reaction. In the first reaction with one mole, one OH is replaced by the hydrogen. Replaced one hydrogen is replaced by the sodium. So here in this case n factor is 1. In the second case, two hydrogens are replaced by the sodium. So n factor is 2. And the last one is a redox reaction. Here oxidation state of carbon is plus 3. Here also oxidation state is plus 3. In carbon dioxide, oxidation state is plus 4. For every carbon, oxidation state changes from plus 3 to plus 4. So there is a change in oxidation number 1. But we have two carbons. For two carbons, total number of electrons are 2, therefore n is equal to 2. So, depending on the reaction conditions, n factors for the molecule will change. Oxalic acid formula will be same, whether it reacts with the oxidizing agent or whether it reacts with the base, its n factor will be decided. This is one example. Now I will take one more. It is a different style. Taking second molecule, second example, taking ferrous oxalate, FeC2O4, and also ferric oxalate, FeC2O4, taken twice. It is treated with oxidized, suitable oxidizing agent. Here, also treated with suitable oxidizing agent. The products are simply Fe plus 3 and 2 moles of CO2. Here the products are 2 Fe plus 3 and 6 moles of CO2. What is the n factor in this reaction in this case? And what is the n factor in this case? Think for a minute. Students, for the convenience, I am taking this one as a A and this one as a B. A molecule, that means FeC2O4, the A molecule composed of Fe plus 2 and C2O4 minus 2, right? In the presence of suitable oxidizing agent, these two species of the same molecule undergoes oxidation, Fe plus 3. Here it changes into 2CO2. 
plus 2 2 plus 3 means a difference of oxidation state is 1 that means one electron is released from the Fe plus 2 and in C2O4 minus 2 oxidation state is plus 3 here oxidation state is plus 4 so change is 1 but two carbon atoms are there in the one oxalate ion totally two electrons so one cat one cationic part requires releases one electron anionic part releases two electron that means this molecule will release three electron that means their oxidation requires three electron so here n factor is three for the molecule of a n factor is three now i am taking the molecule b the molecule b composed of two fe plus three and 3 moles of C2O4 minus 2. Students, if you observe, Fe plus 3 is initially present. After the reaction also, Fe plus 3 is there. That means it is not involved in the reaction. So, such ions are called spectator ions. So, here Fe plus 3 is a spectator ion. In the previous case, Fe plus 2 changes to Fe plus 3. So, their N factor decided by that part of the cation also. But in this case, Fe plus 3, it will remain as Fe plus 3. That's why there is a no change in the oxidation number. But C2O4 minus 2 will change us into CO2. One oxalate ion will produce 2 CO2. But in the given molecule, there are 3 C2O4 minus 2. That is why 6 CO2 will produce. Carbon oxidation state here is plus 3. Here is plus 4. Change per 1 carbon is 1 but the compound contains 6 carbons so 6 electrons are released from the oxalate ion so here n factor for with respect to oxalate is 6 actually with respect to oxalate is only 2 but 3 oxalate ions are there per mole so 6 electrons are involved but cationic part there is a no oxidation no reduction no electron is involved so finally total number of electrons from the b molecule is 6 electrons so n factor is 6 so this is the way here i want to focus one more point is in ferrous oxalate and in ferric oxalate both the cation and anion parts will undergo oxidation in such a cases you will add the all the electrons of the cation and anion for calculating the n factor i am repeating if in a given molecule cationic part and anionic part both undergoes oxidation then number of electrons of the cation and number of the electrons of the anion will be added to count for the calculation of the n factor students next i am taking one more example Here I am taking decomposition of ammonium dichromate. NH4 taken twice CR2O7. Why I am taking this part in this case? Very simple students. In the previous case, one molecule contains cation and anion. Both will undergo oxidation. Both will undergo oxidation. So their N factor is decided by summation of electrons which are involved in the reaction. Here I am taking the ammonium dichromate. On decomposition, it divided in, it decomposes into N2, Cr2O3 and water molecules. This is the overall reaction. I am splitting this reaction into cation and anion. One mole of ammonium dichromate contains two moles of NH4 plus and one mole of Cr2O7 minus 2. Students have to remember N factor is nothing but number of electrons involved per mole of the molecule in the reaction 2 nh4 plus is converted into n2 and cr2o7 minus 2 is converted into cr2o3 in nh4 plus oxidation state of nitrogen is minus 3 in n2 it will be 0 minus 3 changes to 0 means there is an increase in oxidation number this part is called oxidation so, per one nitrogen atom, number of electrons lost by the nitrogen is minus 3. Minus 3 electrons are released. 3 electrons are released from the nitrogen in order to form the N2 molecule. But the given molecule contains 
two nitrogen so you have to multiply with the two then six electrons are released out come to the cr2o7 minus 2 here chromium oxidation state is plus 6 here is plus 3 but anionic part of cr2o7 minus 2 contains two chromiums students look at this two chromiums are there so for one chromium there is a decrease in of oxidation state by three units for two chromiums you have to multiply 2 into plus 6 is equal to plus 12. 2 into plus 3 is equal to plus 6. So difference is 6 electrons. So its oxidation state is decreased. This part of the reaction is called reduction. This part of the reaction is called reduction. Number of electrons accepted by the Cr2O7 is plus 6 electrons. So here these 6 electrons accepted from the cationic part. This Cr2O7 minus 2 accept the electrons from the NH4 plus. Totally six electrons are involved from ammonium to chromate ion. So N factor here is six. In the previous case cation and anion both undergoes oxidation that's why we will add. We will add the number of electrons. But in this ammonium dichromate one part undergoes oxidation and one part, und one part undergoes reduction. Reduction of reaction will invite the electron from the oxidation of reaction. That means electrons of the oxidation reactions are involved in the reduction part of the reaction. So here N factor is 6 only. And now I am taking one more reaction. This is an example for a disproportionation reaction. Taking P4 molecule plus OH minus gives PH3 plus H2PO2 minus. Right? For this reaction, phosphorus oxidation state is 0. Here is minus 3. Here is plus 1. In bracket, molecular weight, molecular weight of P4 is equal to 4m. Atomic weight of phosphorus, atomic weight of phosphorus is m. Because it is composed of 4 phosphorus, if its molecular weight is 4m, automatically atomic weight is m, 4m by 4. In this case, it is a disproportionation reaction. First to find out the n factor. Whenever you calculate the n factor, its molecule, its uh, equivalent weight is easy easily calculated by dividing the molecular weight with its n factor. This is an, a disproportionation reaction. What is called disproportionation? First student let let to know the things. Here phosphorus oxidation state is zero. This is zero changes to minus three. Zero changes to minus three. If the oxidation state is decreased. If the oxidation state is decreased, that part is called a reduction. In the given reaction, in the given reaction, phosphorus undergoes reduction. And if your phosphorus oxidation state is 0, it changes to plus 1. This, here oxidation state is plus 1. That means oxidation state is increased. This is called oxidation. In reduction, P4 molecule is involved. In the oxidation, P4 molecule is involved. If the same molecule undergoes oxidation and reduction, then that is called as disproportionation reaction. So, P4 here converted into PH3. And P4 is converted into H2PO2 minus. H2PO2 minus. If the same species undergoes oxidation and reduction, those reactions are called disproportionation. Then, how can calculate the equivalent weight? One phosphorus may change us into PH3. Another phosphorus may change us into H2PO2 minus. Here, change in oxidation number is 3. It loses, it gains 3 electrons. This phosphorus loses 1 electron. So, here n factor is equal to 3. 
your n factor is equal to 1. This is a simple. But the same molecule will undergo oxidation and reduction. In such a case, as equivalent weight is equal to sum of equivalent weight of one half reaction and equivalent weight of another half reaction. Here for phosphorus atomic weight is 31. Number n factor for the this reduction part is 3. And for the oxidation part is n factor 1. Therefore, on simplification, this is 31 by 3, roughly 10.33 plus 31. That is equal to 41.33. This is the way to calculate equivalent weight for the disproportionation reaction. With this, I am concluding all the equivalent weight concepts. If you have a doubt...